Hi, my name's Joe, I'm from Crossref. Um, I'd like to take you back in history a few years, back to the bad old days before computers. And you have your uh, article, I won't try and read out the whole title, and it has a list of citations, list of references at the back. And you want to follow the references, so you have to go to your librarian and saying, here's the list, um, please give me back the list of articles. Give me back the articles. And that's kind of slow, but you don't really have any choice in the matter. Then the, com then the internet comes along, and the World Wide Web, and suddenly you can publish your article online. And each article has a URL, which is really exciting because you can click on the URL and get straight to the paper, which is fantastic. You can cut out the middleman. Um, everything's much faster and everything's much better, except it isn't because within a year, 3% um, of the links have died. Um, there's some statistics on Wikipedia and suddenly it's not such a good idea. So you can't put URLs after all. And the answer to this is DOIs, which are digital object identifiers. This is a DOI. Um, it's a URL, and it has a uh, dx.doi.org on the front, then a prefix, which roughly corresponds <coughs> to the publisher who published the article, and then an ID. And they have the properties of being persistent, which means they're never going to rot. Um, if the URL, where the paper lives, moves to somewhere else, then the DOI will be updated, and it'll always get you to the right paper. They're globally unique, so it's an agreed way of giving a unique ID to every paper in the world, regardless of who published it. And they're cross-publisher, which means all the publishers have agreed to use DOIs to, to uh, identify their papers. And you can click on them, which means you can do things quickly. So Crossref was set up in 2000. Um, it's a DOI registration agency. Other RAs are available. But Crossref is the one for scholarly uh, articles. So now each article has a DOI. And you can click on the DOI and get to the paper, and you can also reference papers. Um, DOIs are everywhere. There's a DOI, there's a DOI, there's a DOI, there's one. Even on the Journal of Psychoceramics, they use DOIs too. So it's a cross-publisher thing. Um, five and a half thousand <coughs> publishers all put their metadata into Crossref, and then when you click on the DOI, you end up in the right place. So it's the central place for metadata for publishers. Um, it's an association of scholarly publishers, 15 years old, 70 million DOIs, but not only links. also has other services, including an API and metadata, which includes titles, tables of contents, authors, ISSM, data sets, funding information, license information, and full text links. The last two are important, because what's all this got to do with TDM? Why am I here? It's all about the links and the metadata. When you're doing text and data mining, you first will have to identify your corpus, then you need to somehow get hold of it, which means figuring out the license for each document, can you use it or not, where can you find it, and then you have to go and download it. And then there's some clever algorithms, which that's your problem, not mine. And you have to do this for a very large number of documents. It's got to be completely automated. You can't click links one by one. So DOIs plus license information plus the full text URLs is your corpus if you're interested in scholarly publications. So this is a cross-publisher API. Um, are we all okay with what API means? Do I need to explain that? So um, all, the, all the publishers that are participating use this common API. Elsevier, for example, have their own API, which means you can go to Elsevier's site, read their documentation, work out how to use their API to get your um, papers. And if you had to do that for every single uh, publisher, then you'd have to write a new piece of software for each one. Peter Moyrust has the, I don't know which component of Concept Mine, but the scrapers for each individual publisher's site, which means when a new publisher comes along, you have to rewrite at least a certain amount of it, um, which is great. There are volunteers, but if it could all be automatic, wouldn't that be great? So Elsevier have their own API, but they're also participating in the Crossref API, which means it doesn't matter which publisher you're using. Um, you can still use our API to get their stuff. It's also a cross-publisher data schema, which means all the data they provide is in the same format. You don't need to adjust your software according to which publisher you're using. So here's tdm 2000. Um, it doesn't exist, but bits of all the stuff I've heard this morning are bits of this. Um, it's got a few components. There's a DOI discovery tool, so you can identify your corpus to create a list of DOIs that you're interested in data mining. Then for each DOI, you need to make sure, can I use this? So you need something to check licenses. Then you need a, place to, you know, you need a component to work out, where do I get the URL? How can I download it? Um, and those two, you can get straight from the Crossref API, 
if the publisher is participating in our text and data mining service. So the license checker goes to the Crossroad API for each DOI and says, can I have the license for this? The URL link fetcher goes to Crossroad API and says, what's the URL, where can I find it? And then download, it can then go and download the article from whichever publisher um, the article is hosted with, and your software doesn't really need to care where it comes from, it's just a link, um, which then goes into your corpus, which can then do TD analysis and science results. So um, here's the API. I was going to do a live demo, but I have been here before and used the visitor uh, <laughs> network before. So here's one I prepared earlier. Um, so to be straight to the point, here's our API, api.crossweb.org slash works. A work is a, is a document, slash the DOI in question. And the interesting bits are, there's loads of metadata, but, but first of all, here's the license. This says this is a Creative Commons license 3.0. Then the links, PDF and XML links. It's up to publishers what they deposit. Some deposit just plain text. Um, and there's other metadata as well. And you can click on the links. There's the XML full text, and there's the PDF. Um, now, you're not going to be using this API yourself by hand, necessarily. It's your software that goes and uses it. But you can browse it. It's kind of easy on the eye. So here's a couple of examples um, of other bits of the API which you could use just to kind of get started. Now, uh, DOI discovery isn't Crossref's purpose. Our purpose is the linking. But with our API, you can discover stuff. So there are loads of tools out there. Um, but the API can get you started with certain things. So I don't know if you can read the top. It's kind of blurry, but I've got a filter, has license, and has full text, true. And if both of those are set, then that's an article you can text and data mine with. And the answer is 1.1 um, million DOIs. I've put rows <coughs> equals zero at the top, which means just tell me the total. Don't tell me all the rows. But if I did set that to 10, here's the data coming back. But I'm just going to show you the totals for the minute. Um, I've also got query equals blood. If I'm interested in articles with blood in the title that have licenses, that have full text, that gives me 7,000. Um, I've also, at the end, it's a pity you can't see it, but the license.url equals creative commons um, two or three, I think. Um, so you can filter the DOIs in your search to say, give me only the open access articles. If you, for example, want to have an Elsevier um, want to get an Elsevier DOI, and your access to that is restricted because it's subscription, um, accessing the full text is the same as accessing the articles you would on the website. So if your institution subscribes, then it works as it would work anyway. But if you're just interested in Creative Commons open access, then you can filter for that license. Um, yep, and here's just showing some of the results, including the one we just saw. So um, we have uh, 1.1 million articles and counting. It's a new service. Um, 11 million more in the pipeline, just kind of stuck at the end, kind of waiting to be released. Um, and here's the publishers that are currently signed up. Um, AIP, APS, Elsevier, Highwire, IOPP, Springer, Taylor & Francis, Sportsbook, Writer, and Wiley, and more are joining. And there are 120,000 Creative Commons articles, for example. Um, so that's it. Thank you.